Hi YouTube, I'm Kyle Conway and today I'll be doing something a little different. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on easing in Adobe Animate. Now right, right now I'm using uh, Adobe like Animate CC 2018 whatever like the newest one but uh, I personally have not found a version of Flash that Flash or Animate that has not had easing. So it should work on any version you have. Uh, so I guess first things to do, I'll have to let you in a little bit on what easing is, just so you know. So right now I have this scene set up, which I have two purple balls, and in 50 frames they get to the next point, we'll call it point B. And if I hit play, you can see that they get there in exactly the same time. They go from zero speed to full speed to zero. Now, this could be fine for something like a bullet, say, um, as you don't really see a lot of decrease in speed. But in real life objects, like a ball being thrown or a door opening or something like that, the truth is that you don't you do not just go from zero to immediately full speed. Momentum has to be built up and when you lower down, momentum has to be lost. So first we have ease in. All we have to do is once we have this set up with a uh, classic tween, we can click anywhere and go into properties. And here we have a little thing called ease. We're just going to grab that and stretch it all the way to the right. Yep. You see, it gives you that little indicator. That means lets you know if whether you're easing in or easing out. I want it to ease in, so I'm wrong. So we got to stretch it to the left. It goes to negative 100. Uh, I've had people tell me that in their, I guess, careers as animators, they have never, when actually using ease, gone to the full 100. But for the sake of this, I'll just show you how it looks. So now, what ease in will now do is, if we go onto the wireframe mode, you'll notice a lot more frames here, as and then they start to get spread out, as opposed to this one, which just has consistent throughout the same distance. So if we hit play, and you look at the ball up top, you'll start to notice how it slowly starts to go. That's because it is easing in. Meanwhile, the ball underneath is moving at the same speed constantly throughout its trip from point A to point B. Also note that even though it's taking longer to start up, it's getting to the point at the same time as the ball that's just moving constant, which means at the end of it here, it will actually look like it is moving faster than the one down here, if you watch it again. So really picks up speed at the end to make up uh, for the extra time. So the opposite goes for this one down here. We'll click on it. This time we'll actually drag it to the right. It'll pop out a little out so we know that we're easing out. Which means if we go back to the onion skin, it looks the same. As we go to the end, you'll notice that a lot of frames are built up at the end as opposed to this one which is now more consistent. And if we go to the beginning and hit play, we'll notice that the ball rockets at the start and eventually slows to a stop. Watch that again. And of course notice that the ball still reached the end at the same time because it because the first frame is point A 50th frame is point B, and the tween gets it there in exactly 50 frames. So, although one of them is taking a little longer to start up, and one's taking a little longer to slow, they stop moving at the same point, which is frame 50. So that's basically what easing in and easing out is. Now I'll start to show you some uh, practical applications for said uh, technique. All right. So now we have a ball. When you hit play, we can see the ball goes up, and the ball goes down. The ball goes up, and the ball goes down. Uh, 
This is in reference to if you were to throw a ball or any object into the air. Now if you were to do that right now at your computer or whatever or anything like that, you'll know that when you throw a ball it doesn't go full speed up, full speed down, just like that. What actually happens is when you throw an object it slowly starts to lose momentum and eventually when it reaches the height of its uh, arc I guess we would call it, for a split second the object is actually not moving at all and then it slowly starts to build up speed again going towards uh, like a maximum momentum which probably won't reach by the time it gets back to your hand but essentially it would start off the fastest slow down stop and then start to speed up and then hit max speed before you catch it so the way to make this look better than this all we have to do is we're going to have to ease out meaning it's gonna slow and then ease in meaning it's gonna slow in and build up speed whoops messed up there <laughs> so we're gonna grab right here in the middle of this and we are going to go to properties and we're going to ease out we'll just go to 100 we'll click on this one and we're just gonna ease in go to 100 or 99 whatever um, now it's important to note that unfortunately you cannot ease in and ease out on a single classic tween there needs to be two and that's very important for later on so now when we watch this video we'll see it looks a lot better of course I could add some squash and stretch and bounce to the ball but you can tell right now it feels like this ball actually has some weight and that it's like feels a lot better and more realistic so I guess that will take us on to our next scene. Our next scene we have a pendulum here. For all of you, I'm sure you all know what a pendulum is. It's kind of like a medieval device sort of blade on a pivot. So what I've done is I've made this into a graphic and moved the pivot point up there so I can rotate on this pivot. And uh, you know it doesn't have to be a pendulum, it could be a swing a door would work, um, just, just anything that kind of swings, you know, like the latch to a chest or something. And But it's not as simple as the ball of just easing in and easing out. We're going to have to do a couple things. First, other than making sure that the pivot point is right, we're going to have to ease out as we reach the top. If Because at the bottom, the pendulum will be at full speed and as it reaches to say this point it will start to lose speed before it like the ball stops and has a moment where it is not moving at all so I haven't animated this yet so we'll just do that together uh, you know I think 15 frames is probably fine so we're just going to insert keyframe rotate it up this is probably fine we're gonna copy this and paste it at about 30 frames so because it, it's gonna have to come back down then about 45 we insert a keyframe bring it up that's probably fine and we're just gonna copy this and paste it back down at 60 so I'm just gonna delete these because we don't need those anymore and if we play this now you'll see that we start to get a basic idea of how it moves and you know that looks awful I'll even uh, classic tune it okay or not I guess I got a classic tune them one at a time alright so we're gonna hit play and here we got this motion it looks okay but in animation you shouldn't strive for okay so like I said we're gonna have to ease in here so we're gonna go to properties or ease out sorry and uh, we're gonna ease out so now we hit play and that looks good but 
the rest of it's not right. So in addition to easing out here, we're also going to have to ease in on the way back and vice versa on the other way. So on the way back down, we're going to have to ease in. Then when it heads back up to this side, we're going to have to ease out again. And as it comes back down, we're going to have to ease in. Now essentially, when the pendulum, it will reach up and reach its slowest speed, stop, and then start to build up speed. So when it's at the bottom here, it needs to be moving as fast as it's going to move. Meaning, it needs to be at top speed as it's approaching and top speed as it's leaving. So the tween, so we'll have to ease in here, then ease out here. And like the ball, just ease back in when we're coming back down so that it's at top speed. So I'll just add a little uh, loop feature here and hit press play and we'll watch this pendulum. Oop. Now that looks good. That looks like it has some actual weight to it. And uh, optionally you could just add a frame in the very height of the points and that will cause it to stop for a moment but that's pretty much all you need for now and this should be used on everything basically uh, if a hand is sitting on somebody's lap and they raise it up it's not just moving from nothing to constant speed it starts to build up and they don't just immediately freeze their hand to a dead stop Although it might not be very easy to notice, it will slow to a stop. Maybe even have a little bounce back. You should just remember that the purpose of animation is basically to trick people into thinking that these objects and these drawings are moving. So it is important to make sure we understand how things move and how basically physics works and stuff like that so that we can make sure that we're animating the most realistic that we can in the sense of objects and people moving. Now, I'm pretty sure that's it for uh, my tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, critique, compliment, trash talk in the comments. I don't know. Share it. Uh, request any new tutorials you might want and uh, just have a good time animating. I look forward to seeing you out there. Bye!